Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, in case you don't know me, my name is Alex Asher, and I'm the Director of Education at the Albright Kemper Museum of Art. It's my pleasure to host the museum's very first all-digital artist talk. Um, if you'd like to ask Jim a question throughout the presentation, please type it in the chat box and I'll relay your questions after the presentation. Uh, please keep your audio and video on silent. Now, uh, let me introduce you to our artist today. His name is Jim Reese. Uh, his quilt is Alaska 2018 Subalpine Daisy. It's currently on display in the delightful uh, Studio Art Quilt Associations exhibition currently on display in our museum. Uh, Re Jim is a professional graphic designer, editor, painter, sculptor, and teacher. Over the past few four years, he's been making quilts. He says, I quote, I found I, that I enjoy working with fabric and consider my work to be fabric illustrations, end quote. Reese grew up in California. He majored in fine arts from the California State University Fullerton. After graduating in 1979, he moved to Washington, D.C., working as a graphic designer. He moved back to California and worked as a graphic designer, production manager, and ripper graphics manager for California State University Northridge and various book and magazine publishers before moving to Columbia, Missouri. He worked as a senior visual information specialist for the University of Missouri. He also taught Adobe Computer Software in the Graphic Design Program from 1998 until 2020, as well as adult education for the Columbia Public Schools. He retired at the end of 2017. Currently, he ed edits a car enthusiast magazine, designs and produces railroad books, and makes quilts. Jim, take it away. Thank you. Um, I'm going to share my screen here now. Whoops, it's is it disabled again? It is. Uh, you should be able to now. Okay, good. There we go. All right. Well, thank you for coming. I'm gonna I'm gonna show a couple of things here. Uh, the machines that I work on. Um, as as Alex said, it's new to me. Four years is pretty new, as you'll see going through some of the contacts that I've done. Um, so I'm going to show a couple of machines, and I know there's a little delay, so you know um, we'll do our best. So um, this title came from Alex actually, um, but I think it's real apropos. You'll see, and I'll go through some of the things that I've done very quickly, and then we'll linger longer over the quilts and the fabric things uh, later on, so you can see some context and and the divergent path. Um, so hopefully this will come up um, in a minute here, but while it does come up. This machine is the one I did the quilt that's in the gallery now. Uh, it's a little portable um, that I got as part of a deal. Uh, it's a B330 Bernina. Um, and that's what I work on primarily uh, to assemble the quilts. Um, and hopefully that came up. The next one that's gonna come up here momentarily is a long arm. Um, and this is what I quilt uh, or do the background quilting after it's assembled. This is the machine that I use um, primarily to do all the quilting. Now the one that's in the gallery was quilted entirely on that small machine. Uh, subsequent quilts were made uh, were made on the small one and quilted on on the uh, handy quilter long arm, which is pictured here. Hopefully it's come up. And then lastly, my latest acquisition um, is a sit down, and I think everybody knows the difference with the long arms and the sit down. One, you move the machine, the fabric is stationary, and then the other one, um, the fabric moves and the machine is stationary. So one, you stand up and dance along the rails, and the other one, you sit down. So with that being said, uh, these are the machines that I use, um, and then we'll run quickly through some of the artwork that led me to what I consider fabric illustration and quilting, um, and how I got there. So ho hopefully this will come up right away. This is what led me into teaching Adobe software. Um, I started teaching at the university because the uh, illustrator faculty member quit and they decided I was best for this. I couldn't get my way out of it, so I started teaching it. Um, and that's some things, I'll run quickly through them. 
Here's a couple of more. Hopefully these will come up on the one side as an illustrator drawing. On the other side is a speed painting in, in uh, Photoshop, which I taught students how to do. Um, and as Alex pointed out, I went to the University of uh, California at, at, at Fullerton um, in their three-dimensional program. So here are a few, just a, a, a smattering of three-dimensional pieces that I worked on. Um, hopefully it's up. The large chicken was for the state of Missouri's avian influenza program and the centerpiece and the one over on the right, if you're a pro wrestling fan, it's Mio Moscris in a movie uh, they shot in Columbia, Missouri a few years ago. Um, this is some of the painting I did. This is why I consider it painting these, these, the shapes and thing. This is a hundred foot display down at the Kemper um, that was part of agribility and safety programs. The paintings are the key here. Uh, they're the ones that led me to the sort of um, shapes that, that ended up into the quilts. Um, it's the way I like to do the, the fabric work. And I decided it would be fun to bid on a contract with the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, so these are locking dams for kids that actually work. Um, they were built to travel around and educate people on locking dams, things like that. Uh, after graduating in 79, I took a few years off of sculpture. Uh, but then here recently, I went back to bronze sculpture, and that's what these are. Um, a couple of sharks I cast in 79 with my fingerprints still in them, and a couple of dancers that were patterned after my daughter's dance routines and programs. Um, I did a few more bronzes because um, I really like working in the media. I like pouring bronze, and I like the three-dimensional aspect. It was also moving on to the fabrication because there's a, the same kind of depth um, and feeling, at least to me, in, in working in the fabric. So here are a couple of more uh, bronzes. And then I taught myself to weld. Um, I, these are actually pewter, but welded steel bases uh, because I was working on automobiles, custom cars, and I decided I didn't want to give up the welding aspect. So I learned how to weld. Uh, so these are pewter animals with welded steel bases and, and rolled bases. A few more of the, hopefully these are coming up as I'm talking about, the steel pieces, the one uh, on my left at least under the word welding is part of the university's collection. It's the first one I entered in a contest and then I formed a frog and it was in a, a different on the right under word copper. Um, I had access to rebar, so you'll see a lot of rebars. I would quickly go through these. Uh, I liked working with it, um, and it was it was fun to sort of manhandle in shapes that I wanted. These are a few more. This one was in a in a, a artist trading uh, project where I traded my wasps to a poet, and he gave me a piece of poetry, and and then we interpreted it. And then the other one hangs on the wall. I did a series of flowers by hammering them. And the, the background of the flower is actually the off cuts from the wasp. So I reused them. Uh, that was one of the last rebar ones that I did. It was a frog piece um, trying to capture motion, which you'll see later show up in quilts. Uh, fascinated by making the motion. So I tried to make the rebar look like it was flowing in shallow water. And then the butterflies I designed actually went back to Illustrator and designed uh, some breeze blocks from the 50s and had them laser cut by a friend of mine up in Mexico. And then I designed the butterfly wings from a illustrator project that I make students do. Um, and it also got laser cut by the same place. Then I assembled them by welding them together. The next couple were trellises. I've built trellises that are all around the house now. And the large one with the butterflies is an annual commission I do to Pascal's Pal, which is a child cancer group out here in, in Columbia. And the other one, since I'm sort of an avid fisherman and I really like the screen doors from the 50s, particularly in, in Miami area in Florida, uh, I combined my two passions and did some bluegills um, and then some sort of bent uh, steel as a trellis, which is now in the backyard. Amongst working on that, I decided to teach myself how to raise copper. 
So later on, copper shows up in the quilts and I started toying around with it. Uh, this was one of the first ones I did where I drew this out and had it cut again laser. And then I started playing with copper, adding the copper into the honeycombs and later on raised some jellyfish. Raising means that I, I basically beat it into the shape that I wanted to. Um, and uh, that's ended up in one of the quilts actually, but um, that's where I taught myself to raise copper. So I started messing around with that. Then I moved into another one where I wanted to add some, some modeling capabilities. I've been a modeler since I was a small child and had traveling models up and down the East Coast. So I love horror movies from the 50s as well. So I decided to create some horror movie posters based on models that I built um, and then photographed and made into posters with software. Um, so these were three of them I did a couple years ago or a year ago, I guess it was right at the end of 19. So I messed around with making some two-headed creatures and some other horror type things. Um, then, as I was a sort of an avid artist at the Columbia Art League, I didn't miss any shows for quite a while um, till this year. And one of them was a challenge piece where they wanted you to come in and pick um, a tarot card. Uh, they're, they're, you can see here it was named Arcania, and um, you pick a tarot card, and then you would interpret the tarot card into whatever median you liked working in, which became my first quilt, accidentally. Um, I went down, picked the card, knew nothing about tarot cards, didn't know if I got a good card or a bad card or anything else, didn't really think about it, until somebody wanted to trade with me. So then I decided I must have had a good card, so I kept it. And um, on the walk home, I realized that I always worked in steel or bronze and wasn't sure how I was gonna interpret this into anything uh, of a workable piece of art or work. Um, so when I got home, I asked my, I, I was mentioning to my wife, um, who's an international uh, quilter, has been for many years. And I thought, well, I'll tell her and she'll tell me what I'm supposed to do here. I said, so how am I going to make this into a piece of, how do I interpret a tarot card in steel or copper or bronze? And she said, make a quilt. So I went, oh, that's a great idea, except I have no idea how to sew or do anything else. And I don't really know how to piece quilts. Um, and so she goes, well, you can learn. You got that machine. It'll be fine. So this two picture piece is a result. There's the finished quilt on the left and the card deck that they created, their new tarot cards on the right. And so the concept was that I looked up a lot about tarot cards and the emperor card and all sorts of things. And it seemed from my research that it had a split personality card. Some people thought it was a great card, some people thought it was a terrible card. So I decided to give the piece, the quilt, a split personality. And that's why it's called Stan, my good side, because it has very definitely a good side and a bad side. And I approached the background traditionally, pieced it together. I thought that's what I should do, pieced it together. And um, it was frustrating and I didn't like it. So I did the rest of it um, as an applique, a, a raw edge applique, cut pieces out based on my drawing and assembled them. And here's a close up of it. And while that's coming up, you can see the work I started on the, on the crown. This is the copper crown that I raised. I used my bead roller, normally used in automotive sort of things for flooring and stuff. But I thought it made a great crown. So you can see the work on the one side where I was piecing it together, building the face, working on the crown. Um, the crown is drilled so it can be sewn on later. And then on the other side, you can see that it's now all quilted. And the side with the orange, the happy side, has sort of a sunbeam sort of quilt pattern. And the side on the other, the right side, at least as I'm looking at it, has hot rod flames that I free handed into the, into the piece area above the emperor. And the crown has been stoned with Zabarsky crystals, um, which seemed easy to me because I made all my daughter's costumes for her competition dance and we used, or I used thousands of crystals. So, uh, I busily stoned it all and had a pretty good time doing that. 
so I had so much fun with this, I entered it and, and it, they were uh, pretty excited about it because nobody had done any quilts for them. And I was pretty excited about it because it was well received and the parts that I thought were amiss uh, didn't seem to appear to anybody. So I moved on to the next project. I found a, um, a challenge, I guess, where uh, it was called Heart of Homes and I made this 12 by 12 quilt as part of a um, project to move people from subsistence housing into independent living. And you could decorate, you could do a quilt, donate it, and they would decorate um, their new house that way. So the drawing you can see is on typing paper, is over on the one side. And I, I, I went totally my way of doing um, applique, raw edge sort of things on the other side. I gave up the piecing altogether and just created the part. So the drawing is pretty small, as you can see, it only takes up eight or nine lines on it on a type paper. And then it ended up being 14 by 14, I believe, or 12 by 12. It's a square one and I left it raw on the edge, which I don't do anymore, but I just didn't feel like binding it. Um, and it was another thing I had to learn. So uh, it only took on so much at a time, I felt a little overwhelmed. So I did what I like, the 50s house and uh, sort of did the same raw edge with no piecing this time. Interpreted my drawing over there. I sent it in and it was well enough received that it actually made it into Quilting Arts Magazine, which was a huge motivational boost for me because I could then take that, that, that working in a vacuum, thinking something was good actually was somewhat uh, verified that it was at least acceptable because it made it into the magazine, at least in my thought. So I was motivated to move on to the next piece. Um, in fact, I took on two more pieces, what my wife calls UFOs. So now I've thought UFOs were something else, but now they have two meanings. Um, so there it is in the magazine up in the corner. And uh, somebody notified me of that on the SAQA website that look what we got into. And I looked there and there was mine in the picture. Um, so I ran and got the magazine. So then I took off and did some more. And another one of my drawings, uh, sort of a, uh, a where I wanna live, drawing on the one side there. And then sort of a um, interpretation of all the playground equipment I grew up with, where you could climb up in the rockets and uh, the different playgrounds and things and all the wonderful space travel that we'd be doing. And um, that one still is a UFO. The one with the tiki hut in the water uh, was donated and auctioned off at the SAQA auction a few years ago, or about a year ago, I guess. But it led me on doing more things. So the next thing that I did was the one that's in the gallery now, uh, which is here. And it didn't occur to me that because I had been doing pretty well straight shapes, um, you can see this when it comes up, that I cut out these very intricate flower shapes and they're traced on a photograph I did from a um, nature walk that my wife and I took on an Alaska cruise. And so we went a lot of time walking through native things. We were in Alaska, so we did Alaska things. And we walked amongst all their different plants. And I liked the flowers, the subalpine daisies, so I took pictures of them. And then I brought it home <clears throat> and decided it would make a great quilt. So I traced them. So what I did, I blew up my photo and my computer equipment to the size that I wanted and I traced it on a tracing paper. Then I traced that onto uh, soft fuse backwards and then glued it onto the fabric and cut it out, thinking that that was being really clever. And uh, turned out to be more interesting to quilt around those little center flower shapes on the uh, portable, the B330 than I thought it would, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And here's some, uh, hopefully that'll come up quickly. This is a, a, a in process of it. So you kind of see how I went about it. The background was diffused green. I added some greens you can see down in the lower right. And then all the flower petals were just traced, traced backwards onto soft fuse, ironed onto a piece of fabric and cut out, and then ironed down uh, into a 
uh, the pattern that looked like the photo. And so then you can see as it gets built up on the other side, I've gone and added the highlights to the petals, the shadows overlapping, and then started on the center of the smaller flower. Um, and they're all done the same. They're all ironed down. Uh, it's about, well, you can see it in the gallery. It's what, a little over two feet by a little over three feet. I think it's 28 by 38. So horsing it through a six inch throat sewing machine turned out to be kind of an adventure. Um, but I found out soft fuse re-irons down pretty well. So I kept working at it. And then this one's actually got just a simple binding on it. But I was excited that that one got selected for an SAQA traveling show. So I did another one. And that was this one uh, for the Columbia Art League's themed show um, called The Child Within. And my idea was I listened to a lot of Jimmy Buffett music and I thought that traveling around the globe was interesting and he has a, a line of headed east or headed west. So there's sort of no designation in it. So then I thought, well, this will be fun. So I created an island uh, loosely based on Bora Bora. And you can see the finished quilt on the side, they're all bound up. There's a close up of it as I imagine the tides and the currents in the ocean would be, um, which presented me a new problem on the long arm because I wanted to go diagonally. And I had only left about three or four inches of fabric. And that was not quite enough to be a diagonal, to do diagonal uh, quilting. It would have been fine to go straight, but diagonal was a bit of a challenge. But otherwise, it went really well. And I was pretty excited about it. Um, and it all worked out. And I freehanded the airplanes in um, quite a bit of the rest of it without following it. I drew the canopies and things. And here it is in process. Um, on the one side is the smaller island and then above and to the right of the small island, you can see my chuck marks where I figured the edge of the quilt would be. So everything beyond that is um, material to be held onto the long arm when I loaded the long arm. And then you can see down in the center are the other two islands or other two parts of the islands before they were they're, they're laid on there and I don't think they're glued down yet, they might be, but they're, they're laid on there and ready to iron. And then the one on the far right is the back of it. I picked out something I like, thought it'd be fun to have sort of a, a tiki or an island, sort of an animal look. So I put butterflies back there and you can also see the sleeve up top. And all of those come from drawings that I make. I have notebooks full of drawings of things that don't quite get made. Um, and they look like this. So as 2020 started, um, I was still study, I'd gone back to school to study sculpture again, um, and was thinking about trying to get an advanced degree for whatever reason. So I spent so much time over there, I figured I should. Um, and there's my original drawing of an alien spacecraft in the forest. And then a tightened up drawing of it. And I don't really have the, I don't have a picture of the full size, but that's what led to the full size. Um, and that was gonna be the quilt in February when they, well, in March when they suddenly closed the university. And so everybody kind of figured out what we we're gonna do next and stopped working. But that gives you an idea what the drawing looked like uh, that I drew around about Christmas time. And then what the tightened up drawing looked like that I was gonna make the quilt from. And you can see I've simplified it into patterns. Um, the only thing that's not showing in that one is the, the light coming from the center of the um, saucer. There is the circle on the ground for the light in the forest, but it's, I've not put the, the drawing part in. And I was gonna put it in with some tool so that it was transparent and you could see through and, and it would look like light and then a yellow spot on the ground. And that was one of the ones I had planned to do um, in the spring semester. Here are two more that I was working on. Uh, hopefully they come up quickly. The one is, is a reinterpretation of something called the Battle of LA, which had nothing to do with aliens, but I thought it sounded like it should. So I created a bunch of searchlights and flying saucers over a building. You can see the same sort of building shapes that appear in the one with the rockets. 
Um, and then I have a vast collection of gas station photos that I take all over the country. And the one on the right is a gas station or more or less an interpretation of a gas station in Chillicothe um, transplanted to a tropical area where a, a flying saucer has stopped by um, and that was called rest stop. Um, it isn't quite as far along as some of the other ones in thinking and ready to print out. They get printed out on a large scale printer and then I tape them together and work from that. Um, and then lastly, these are a couple of rough sketches for some other ones. And I think we were playing around earlier. Someone mentioned that one of them looks a little Jetson-like, uh, one of my favorite shows from childhood. So uh, I, I reinterpreted Rush Hour in space. Uh, so that's what that one comes from. And then the other one was me musing about uh, we're all going to be levitating and space travel and off the pavement sort of moving around. So I thought it'd be fun to buzz the flamingos. Uh, so that's kind of what's happening there. And there, those are all going to be quilts here if I get motivated again pretty quick uh, to get working on them. But I really like working in that overlaying them in an applique manner and then using just raw edge. So that's probably how I'm going to keep doing it because I really like doing it that way. I thought about doing some trapunto sort of stuffing them but I don't know, that may not happen. So we'll see how that goes, but that's how I got here. So it is really a divergent path to, <laughs> to where I am now. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's a well, quick run through my life for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to see the UFO series. <laughs> that one looks like a lot of fun. Um, thank you for joining us so much, Jim. Uh, does anyone have any questions? And to ask Jim, go ahead and throw them in the chat. Um, really, there are a few enough of us that you can probably even unmute yourself and ask in person if you'd like to. Probably so. Um, B had a comment about the Bora Bora. She loves it. Maybe next time you'll do New Zealand instead. <laughs> <laughs> have to go what, a little more southwest. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Um, well, if no one has any questions, then just thank you again, Jim, and thank you for those of you who joined us for our very first digital art talk. This will be available online for viewing later. The next artist talk is going to be released as an online video on October 6th. It's with, with Don Anderson, and he'll be talking about his exhibition, Landmarks and Points of Interest. The exhibition opens along with Jerry Trilling's Memory Ponds on Friday, September 25th from 4 to 7 p.m. And that is open to the public, so we really hope that you can join us. Uh, for more information, visit our website, albright-kemper.org. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>